Ryan Hartz, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. If you're looking behind me, yep, that is the first Christmas tree I have put up since living in Los Angeles. So it actually took me till I was leaving to put one up for the first time. But I'm in the Christmas spirit. Even though today's vlog is very sad, I want to do it today. We've actually been out to this location for another vlog once before. But today we are going to West Hollywood and we are going to talk about the unfortunate death of Sal Mineo, an actor who really it seems like he was born to act and took a lot of chances in his career, set a lot of new standards, broke ground, and unfortunately was dead before he was 40 years old. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. The Sal is probably most well known for being Plato in Rebel Without a Cause to most people, but he was also in Giant with James Dean. And I think this showed how versatile he really was because even though he was American born and his ancestry was Sicilian, in Giant he was playing a Mexican soldier. And he even went further and talked about playing a Native American. Sal was born and raised in the Bronx, New York, but his father and mother both had ancestry going to Sicily, so he was pretty full Italian and made his name, like I said, pretty much in Rebel Without a Cause, but he had a career even before that. But it was his performance as Plato in Rebel Without a Cause that garnered him a Best Supporting Actor nomination for an Academy Award. He was the youngest at that point to ever be nominated for that. So let's go out to West Hollywood see where Salminio's last apartment was, and unfortunately where he passed away. We're gonna be shooting through Hollywood though, so we can get to West Hollywood. I'm definitely back in Hollywood. There's the now defunct Amoeba Music. Now, they're moving, but sad to see that building empty. Bought a lot of stuff there. Another two famous actresses lived in this same complex that we're going to, that I vlogged before. So as I mentioned, Sal Minio, when he was born, it was almost like he was born to be an actor because his parents saw this even from a young age. His father was a coffin maker, so he was definitely not going into the family business by being an actor. But his mother put him into classes to develop his musical and acting ability even at a young age. So when he was 11 years old, he was cast by Tennessee Williams for one of Tennessee's plays, The Rose Tattoo. He also eventually became um, involved in the King and I on Broadway. He played the young king opposite Yul Brenner. So his career was flourishing. Now when he was um, 16 years old, that's when he was in Rebel Without a Cause. And like I said, that was really, really a big deal because he was the youngest at that time to be nominated for an Academy Award. After that, in 1960, he would play a Holocaust survivor in Exodus, and his co-star in that, Jill, is someone that he would fall in love with and on again, off again date for many years, but he was also nominated for an Oscar for that movie. So Sal's career seemed like it was very big and flourishing, and he was big on screen, he was big in TV, he was big on the stage, but um, even though he was a heartthrob, he was openly bisexual. And so it was said that that hurt his career. And eventually after a while, he just wasn't getting any leading man parts, even though he had done 20 or so really great movies and put on really great performances, he just wasn't getting any acting. So he went into doing theater again, back on the stage, and he was doing LGB type plays. And they were getting very, very great reviews, but um, this was just one of those things that at the time, being openly bisexual in that manner, it really limited what he could do. So by 1976, he had moved over to here because he was starring in a play up in San Francisco that had become a big hit, and so they had decided to bring it down to Los Angeles, and he was playing a bisexual burglar in this. We are right across the street from his last apartment that he was renting when he died. So when we were here before, we were vlogging that upstairs apartment up there where Shelly Winters and Marilyn Monroe shared, but it was actually the apartment next door, the building next door that Sal Minio was renting at the time. He had just moved down here or back down here and 
he was coming home in the evening from having theater performance practice. He was pulling in his back driveway into the carport and that's when it all happened. So in this case, you can actually walk right through the apartments and we can go back to where he had parked his car. Now this was not a murder that was necessarily planned or anything. It was someone who had an extensive rap sheet, 17 years old, and he was looking for drug money. He didn't even know it was Salminio. Not sure which apartment it would have been, but definitely in this building. I believe he was parked right here. He had just parked his car, got out, and a 17 year old assailant stabbed him. Stabbed him one time, right in the heart, and took off running because Sal immediately started yelling out, oh my God, oh my God, and was alerting people to it. So he apparently ran down here where he would eventually collapse and sadly you can see crime scene photos where he's laying right down here and um yeah he had wasn't even robbed actually in the end he still had his watch on he still had uh $21 in his pocket. Let's see which one was it? I believe it was this one that I matched it up. So it would have been right there. So Alminio would have been found dead right there with his car keys beside him. All just for going out to do a rehearsal of P.S. Your cat is dead. Now what happened after this? Well, people came, gathered around, and then the police showed up. So unfortunately, like I said, within just five, six minutes, they estimate that Salminio was dead. He bled to death right there in that driveway. Now, they had you know, various descriptions of the person that did it, but they didn't really have anything solid to go on, and things apparently went cold for a while. And then about a year later, well, a woman came out saying that her husband had come home that night, said that he had killed a man with bloody clothes on that very night, and this man's name was Lionel Williams. He, um, like I said, he had been 17 years old at the time. He was in and out of jail, had all kinds of rap sheets, and um, at the time, he was now serving in Michigan, serving time in Michigan for check fraud. So apparently while he was Inside jail, he had bragged to people that he was the one that killed Salminio. That was relayed to the prison, and he was then transferred on to um, back into Los Angeles, where he ended up a year later standing trial. And um, the problem then was that the main witness that they had was his wife, and she had committed suicide by shooting herself upon hearing that he was arrested. So they finally were able to um, convict him. He was sentenced to 51 years in prison. And then he was paroled 11 years later, set free, and then violated his probation and ended up back in jail. Pretty sad, Salminio was 37 years old at the time he died. Such a sad story, I mean there's never obviously a good reason for murder but this was completely senseless it was a drug robbery of complete stranger and they didn't even end up robbing anything he died for nothing salminio is now laid to rest in hawthorne new york just outside new york city outside the bronx where he grew up with his family and it's the gate of heaven cemetery that i've vlogged once before i didn't go to his grave but we went to billy martin and babe ruth who are also buried there James Cagney's also buried there, so 
It's a pretty well-known Catholic cemetery. Rest in peace, Salminio. I figured since we're right around the corner, Fred, I want to show you a little something extra today. Let's head over to the Sunset Marquee. So we've made it over to the Sunset Marquee since it's just, you know, literally a few minutes walk away. And I want to go here because this is where, when we used to, I had a job where we kind of worked with the Who, they would only stay here. And I know Joe Bonamassa has some of his guitars always on display here. I'm hoping they'll let us see. Let's go see it. This is where Pete Townsend always stays when he's in town of the Who. But Joe Bonamassa's little Nerdville Museum inside of here is over here. They have all kinds of great rock and roll photos. Look at that, Joe Strummer here at the pool. So take a look. First you see that. <laughs> the Sunset Marquee guitar. How cool is that? It's even got the street sign up there. And then it says Sunset Marquee. Oh, look at that, Les Paul. Slash, Billy Gibbons. Nice. Those are great. Deep roll, wow. Joe Perry. Epic, if you get your face on there. That's epic, Green Day, Jimmy Page. Speaking of the Who, Roger Daltrey. Then here's some of the Joe Bonamassa guitars in the collection. Sorry, my reflection's in it. <laughs> look at that. The, look at the headstock, it says, The Gibson. I've never seen one that said that. That's a little stuffed doll of Joe Bonamassa. He calls this his Bonamuseum. Museum. <laughs> no, seriously, look. The Bonamuseum. Museum. And then check out this display. These are old, baby. These are classic. I just love all the rock and roll pictures all around the lounge area. Dress to Kill. Patty. Nice. Boss. Motley Crue. And there's Bjork over here. Bjork on the beach. Chris Cornell. And here's that epic pool that we were looking at Joe Strummer standing in front of when we came in. With a Morrison Hotel ad above it. And they even have a gallery in here before you take off of all rock and roll photos. Look at all that great stuff. Cher. Billy Gibbons out front. Here's the sunset marquee right where we just saw that photo of Billy Gibbons in the car sitting right there in front. Let's go cruise a little bit more of the sunset strip too since I don't think I'll be doing a whole lot more up here for the future for a while. Who knows? Bullwinkle's back. Rocky and Bullwink established 1961 says. Here's the old tower records. In the Viper Room, still here somehow, to the left. They keep threatening to tear it down, but it's still there. And then of course the Whiskey A Go Go right up here to the right, where this car's turning. If it ever turns, there it is. Jim Morrison, Frank Zappa, The Doors, Jimi Hendrix, they all played there, Guns N' Roses. And then here's the Roxy to the right and the Rainbow Bar and Grill. And then this liquor store right here on the corner is the one that Halle Berry crashed her car into and fled the scene. And good grief, what is any vlog without you? I know, we don't show you everybody gets upset. Don't they? They get upset. What a handsome face. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I mean, I know it's a sad vlog, but at least we can remember Salminio. I think seeing the actual spot of where that happened sometimes makes it more real. If you'd like to explore more of his work, of course, like I mentioned earlier, Exodus or Rebel Without a Cause, 
also giant, but he was really great in the Gene Krupa story playing Gene Krupa and in fact became a pretty good drummer out of it and would go on celebrity shows as like a guest drummer performer. So have a great night everyone. We'll see you all next time. Have a good night and goodbye.